Right, so in the first video, we discussed basically what is the process of a purchase order. So now we're going to discuss what a purchase order is legally, right? And this is very important because primarily what happens is in a large company or a federated company, which means a company that's got lots of divisions, is that to manage the process of buying and selling, uh, of, of buying goods from suppliers, they use a system which has purchase orders. Now, when you go to the store to go buy uh, a pick and pay, you primarily get a receipt, right? Which is a, a confirmation that, hey, am I going to get in trouble for naming in a particular brand? Nobody knows, but it's provocative. Get the people going. So you get a receipt that confirms that you've bought goods. And if you're unhappy with any of the goods, you return it using the receipt, right? From that receipt, you can claim back anything that is not delivered in good condition. So how in very large companies, they mitigate against this problem of returns and all of that stuff and managing their accounting is that instead of paying out upfront, what they do is they issue a purchase order. And on the purchase order, there'll be a specification. of what they want, when they want it, how much they're paying for it, who's the person in charge of buying it, procuring it. Um, think of this, so inside a company, there'll be somebody called a buyer, right? And that buyer would be like the waiter, right? So that's the equivalent of the original example we're using in the restaurant, it's like a waiter. And who's in charge of that whole transaction with the company? And that document, that purchase order with those specifications is legally binding, right? It's legally binding in this sense. If we'll go back to Tepo's enterprise, which delivers tissue to company A, if Tepo Enterprise delivers according to the specifications written on the purchase order, company A now has a legal obligation to pay Tepo. There's a small step before Tepo invoices that happens after they've delivered. Tepo sends a delivery note, right? Something called a delivery note. Each company uses different terms for this. Some have GNR. I have no idea what GNR stands for. Um, the team might be able to tell you, but every company has a different methodology of terming the delivery note. And on the delivery note, what it will say, it will say, Tempo will say, I have delivered X number of goods. I've delivered 200,000 tissues to you. And it was delivered on this and this day. And I need you to sign and confirm that you've received this delivery and stamp it with your official stamp from your procurement de department. Right? This stage of the delivery note is equivalent to the waiter or waitress. Do we still use the term waitress? I, I saw we use actor now for everyone. But anyway. And the waitress comes or the waiter comes to you and says, is everything in order, sir? And you say, yeah, no, everything is order. Or ma'am, is everything in order? And you say, yeah, everything is in order. That's the equivalent. And they might ask, did you find any hair or funny things in your food? And... <laughs> <laughs> and then on this confirmation, that is the equivalent to a delivery note. You're saying everything is A-OK. -okay. Sometimes the chef comes and says everything in order. Sometimes you send back the food and you say the food is too cold and all of that, right? This happens a lot in this process where the wrong things were delivered according to the purchase order and then they have to be replaced, sent back to suppliers and then changed and that sort of thing. That's the equivalent process of the delivery note. Then once it's delivered and the waiter has asked you, are you happy? Now they send out the invoice. This is equivalent to Tepo sending out the invoice. Now, this is arguably the most legally binding document a company can send to another company confirming that they will pay them if they deliver according to specifications. This you could use in a court of law to say, I am owed money if you can prove that delivery was delivered properly. And invoice is the final stage. You know, I see uh, all the new age kids 
uh, laughing about invoicing being their favorite hobby and whatnot on the entrepreneurship scale. This is the last step of any true procurement process. Um, this is the first step. And this is the step where you need to prove yourself and do all of these things, and then you finally invoice. By the time you invoice, um, you would have done all of the work already. So that is the legal ramification of what a purchase order is. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, which we'll touch on in the next video, this creates a problem. So the restaurant needs to have stock of goods to make food for you, right? Now, in the restaurant that's running constantly all day, every day, that's pretty simple uh, economics because it's a small order, right? But the roles are reversed in purchase order. The big company is ordering from the small company, right? And they're usually ordering very large things, which we'll touch on in the next video, is why purchase order funding exists. Um, what we wanted to do is pretend to be being humble and safe. Thank you guys for watching our videos. Um, really appreciate it. Get those views up. Um, this is what YouTube influencers do. So, um, click on subscribe. <laughs> there is no subscribe button in this video. But on a serious note, thanks for your time, guys. I hope this has been helpful. And if you want any information that was not in this video, please look at our other video so that you can have a clearer and deeper understanding of how all of this works. It's very lucrative for you.